Um, joining me now is Maui resident Alan Dakar. Um, Alan, thank you for being with us. We've been hearing reports from survivors who say that they didn't get any alerts about this coming. There was no texts, there were no sirens, there was nothing talking about an evacuation, get out now. Were you, did there you get any? Nothing, there was nothing about anything. The windstorm began overnight. I was awake and I lived right in Lahaina, um, right in Lahaina town. And normally we get alerts about windstorms because people have things in the yard. You know, it's an outdoor place and bad things don't really happen. People tend to be very casual about putting things away. So when there's a windstorm, you kind of know to go out and tie things down or put things away so they don't blow all over the place. There was no warning, none. The winds were howling overnight. And I even checked at about four in the morning because I was surprised that I had missed the, you know, a weather advisory. And there was still no advisory. And the winds outside my house were uh, gusting like crazy. I went outside um, right after the power went out about 4.30 in the morning, and I could barely stand up in my driveway because the gusts were so strong. And my house is right in, oh, and right now you're showing video that I took when I was trying to get back to my, get my gallery right as I was evacuating. My house is just a few blocks from there. And, um, and then the police never came by to warn us. I saw smoke in the early afternoon, very close by, but I thought it was a brush fire. I wasn't that concerned. Figured we'll pay attention to it. And if it's becoming serious, usually the police would come around and let people know that they might want to evacuate. But I, my thing is, I don't like when people evacuate out of panic because if there are people who need to be evacuated, let them get out first. Mm -hmm. And um, there was nobody ever came. And what do you think um, that is? I finally evacuated. When I found out one of my houses was on, because I have three houses in the same neighborhood, and I found out one of them was on fire. Why do you think there was no warning? How can you explain that? The weirdest thing is the weather, the fact that there was no weather warning, because that's where it would have started. And they usually warn people. We get weather advisories all the time, and it's a perfect day. So, you know, usually if there's any chance there's going to be any foul weather, because that's a bad event, right? Because especially in Lahaina, the weather is usually perfect. So um, I, that's why when I checked at four in the morning and it still said clear, I was like, the, like trees are breaking. So I, the, I don't understand how that happened because even when it's really nice, it'll usually say there's wind and you're like, yeah, there's no wind or it'll say chance of rain and it's perfectly clear and sunny. So um, I, that's the one thing that, you know, I've never seen a situation where they under warrant. Um, and because there is no warning, see, if they're, even if they had said that there was a small chance, people here love to panic <laughs> they, because bad things don't happen. So they people go check on elderly people in advance and they tell people, go check on the people who might not be so mobile. Make sure that you know where they are. And, you know, if, if anything happens, that, you know, go get them. There was none of that. And then on top of that, what made this so horrific is that usually if we have fires, there are brush fires out in the fields. And the fire department is very good about keeping the fires from jumping to the residential areas. That's their job and they're good at it. These fires started right on the buildings because it was power lines coming down like crazy because yeah. of those winds. So. They, this, they, there was no time. As soon as the fire started, there were people in danger. And they, I gather, happened in a lot of places very quickly. You know, so, and then on top of that, you know, the fire department was already dealing with this massive fire in Kula on the other side of the island, so they already had resources pulled away. Alan, what's so striking about these images that we're watching, including the ones that you shot, is that we don't normally see stuff from, from this vantage point. We, we, usually by the time it gets this bad, people are gone. Usually by the time that there are flames engulfing entire buildings in an entire town, it's been evacuated by this point. That's what makes this even more surprising. And as you're laying out that, that even when there's wind, you usually get a notice and you didn't get it in this, in this scenario. Um, the town is, is gone. I mean, you guys have experienced hurricanes. Nothing, nothing, no hurricane has ever done what, what this has done. Um, can you rebuild? Do you think you're going to get the, the resources you need to rebuild? Do you, do you see that as a possibility? This is the thing. This is not like 
other catastrophes where, you know, there are situations where whole towns are wiped out by a fire or a flood, and it's devastating. But there are places for people to go. There's neighboring towns. You can drive far away. If your business, if where you work burned down, you can get a job and just have to commute farther. If your house burned down, but your job is still there, you could go stay you know, a few towns over and come commute. We can't do that. There is no next place. And on top of that, the this wasn't just the houses that burned, and it wasn't just the commercial district that burned, it was both. So the economic engine is destroyed. The housing stock, we already had a housing crisis here. Um, major restaurants that were packed closed for good because they couldn't hire enough staff because there's no worker housing left. So this has been a problem for the last few years. So there, it's not like there was any excess capacity to go rent another place right now. There's nothing. And then on top of that, we just lost thousands of houses. Um, and so one of my things is we got to figure this part out because, for instance, a lot of construction workers just lost their house. Yeah. So when we figure out how we're going to get the make it so that permits can be expedited in a reasonable way, even once people can start rebuilding, how are we going to have the workers? Because there's a, there already weren't enough construction workers. There's like, you know, this before the fire, if you needed a plumber or an AC company or an electrician, you had a long way. Okay? So we already had a problem. And now not only are, do we have a massive amount of need, but a lot of those people don't have homes anymore. And if they can't house their families, they're going to leave the island. So we have to solve, and I think it's solvable. I just, I, I, I think it's going to take, I've said this before, it's going to take a heroic effort. Yeah. Um, and it's my hope is that the governor and the county government, the mayor, the council get together and put egos aside. And, you know, the, I know that there'll be federal support, but this is something where, like I, as an example, the county is going to need a lot more people in the planning department to process permits because yeah. we can't wait 12 months for a permit right now. Um, and we're, they're going to need an awful lot more inspectors because that's always been a backlog too. And um, they're going to need them quickly so that you can get the inspections and get things built properly and get people back in houses quickly. And my thing is they shouldn't cut corners. I'm not saying ignore the rules or, you know, you know, go, lower your safety standards, but they just have to not nitpick. You're saying expedite, um, expedite, get things done and get them done yeah, quickly. They have to, they, everybody has to understand yeah. what the goal is. Yeah. And right now it's it, because it's so many agencies and, so, you know, it, it's someone's going to have to from the top. That's why I'm hoping the governor's office really takes the lead or the, 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 the mayor's office. But because the state's going to have to provide a lot of resources whichever, somebody's got to take the lead and smack people upside the head every time they start nitpicking and slowing things down. Yeah. Because we, this is not, we, the video that you're looking at right now that I shot, I was trying to get to my gallery, which is in the dead center of the, the main commercial district. And if just those two blocks had burned and nothing else, it would be economically devastating to Maui for a decade. Okay, those two blocks, just two blocks, right? If nothing and everything else was up, it would still be devastating. But then you realize the entire town's also gone. So how do you have the people around that you can even try to do this? And, you know, it's everybody wants to help. And I know, I mean, it's wonderful that people want to help. We're going to need it, but we're going to need it for a long time. And the things that we're going to need are things like, more people in the planning department, you know, resources right now. Crazy thing. I have three houses. They're all gone. Yeah. It took, and I have, uh, all of my employees are safe. I didn't find out that the last of my tenants was alive until yesterday when a news report showed him in a shelter. He had, was, was one of the people who had to jump in the ocean. He got battered against the rocks, wounded, 
pulled out by a rescuer, sent over to a rescue vehicle, but he also lost his shoes in the ocean. He badly burned his feet, so they had to throw him back in the ocean Gosh. and wait until they could get people to carry him across the parking lot and put him in a vehicle to take him to the hospital. And he doesn't have a phone. He still doesn't have a phone. And it amazes me that no one has gone to the phone companies and said, all right, we're going to give you some names and phone numbers. We need temporary SIM cards and just put the SIM, give them a phone with a SIM card for the moment. You know, I don't understand why that's not happening. It's as, like, it's a little well, thing, but boy, would it make it easy. What you're saying is you need a whole lot of not just people doing the work, but a whole lot of paper pushers behind the scenes getting things started. Um, Alan, it, you, you, problem solvers. Yeah, problem solvers. You've you've laid it out uh, better than anyone I've heard so far, and, and you're so right. It was not just the businesses; it's the homes as well, and the and the homes of the people who are the people that you need to rebuild things. Uh, the, the scope of the dev devastation is jaw-dropping, jaw-dropping. And if, any, if you've been to Lahaina, I've been there. I used to go there a lot when I was a kid. That, that two block that you're talking about, I mean, it was the economic driver. It was where all the tourists went. Um, I remember Cheeseburger in Paradise was our favorite place to go eat. Um, Alan, thank you so much. Well, right now, if you, look at that, go ahead. if you look at that video that you just had up, the building on the right that's burning, there were, for the last 20 or 30 years, it's been a pizza place, but that used to be the old Blue Max. Elton John used to, like when he would be on Maui in the early 70s, he would play there. It was just a bar. He would just play there, right? There's like a, a lot of places that are really special yeah. for a lot of reasons. And the ma there's a magic. And my biggest fear is that if people don't understand that this isn't a situation where you just start building again, there's a fabric of yeah. this community that's special. And I got to tell you, the fabric is burned, but it's still there. Even people, a lot of people have nothing left, but most people are determined to stay. The problem is right now we're all couch surfing. Mm -hmm. So that, does, that can't go on forever. We got to solve the short-term housing crisis, which I think is solvable because we got resorts and we got all those Airbnbs that didn't burn and for the, in the we got to figure out a way to make it so that the people who now have no place to live can at least stay someplace for six months while we start rebuilding. Alan, you're and right. And if we don't do that, we're going to lose the community. Alan